Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again, it's time for another Bulgarian workout. So uh, let's turn this one into a learning experience, uh, because today, you know, again, the squats were a little rough, and people need to remember, number one, I'm fatigued from extra back off work, number two, I've switched to high bar, so yeah, it's going to be harder. My squat ended up being 3.2 seconds on the concentric. That means we are now falling in the range of a, a, a training max and getting close to an absolute max. So pretty much almost a competition max at this point. Uh, and again, part of that is that my calories are, are lower again too. I lowered on my hair last week, started eating a little bit less so that we can slowly speed along a little extra fat loss. I feel like I can gain muscle and strength and still lose some fat. Uh, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. But, uh, you know, it does make training a little harder sometimes on the heavy sets. I do feel it every now and then, but I will adapt. So let's turn it into a learning experience, because yesterday I had someone who's a regular poster say, well, that's starting to look like a good morning. Uh, no, I mean, normally I could, I could be a dick and say, well, you're just ignorant. No, let's, let's not be that way. Let's actually understand what's going on. Uh, because it, you'll notice my lower back doesn't go lower than 45 degrees when we get to this peak set with 485, right? It's my upper back that's rounding. Well, a good morning, you do the opposite. You keep your chest up, right? And you keep your shoulders and everything up so that the bar doesn't roll down your head. And your lower back goes almost parallel to the floor, right? That's how you perform a good morning. I used to do good mornings on camera when I was training uh, conjugate method years and years ago for a little while. Did good mornings all the time. Um, with a good morning, your, your lower back is what goes low, not your upper back. So what's happening and how do we fix it? Well, we've developed this imbalance because I've been squatting heavy for two years and done no squats. I mean, deadlifting heavy, right? So I have compensatory strength there. My upper and middle back is stronger than my quads. They're stronger than my quads. So what's happening is that this is what we talk about when we say compensatory strength. I have a stronger muscle that is compensating for the weaker muscles. And what's happening in order for me to get the weight up quicker, my, low, my upper back is rounding a little bit so that it can spring the weight back up at the top and my quads can push with maximum force and then I use that to kind of lock the last bit. That's what we're seeing. Um, that's a compensatory strength. The only solution for this is what? To get my quads stronger. That, that's all we can do. You can't change the technique or you could just go lighter, but then we get less training effect. This training system, Bulgarian, we need that training max, even if it's sloppy sometimes. So we have compensatory strength, we need it. So the best solution is for me to do these back off squats. So today I threw the belt back on, I'm like, this belt, this isn't gonna work. I need to replicate my exact squat that I'm doing heavy for volume. And I need to do more and more volume so that I get more practice and we load those quads up and we make them grow. We get them bigger and stronger by doing more squats. And we start with one set and when I'm able to complete one back off set, we go to two. So if I've got 12 back off sets every week and six heavy, heavy sets, that gives me 18 sets. That's a lot of extra volume to grow off of. That's what it is going to take to fix the problem. Now, you're gonna get some people say, well, why don't you just use a front squat? Well, number one, no study in the world has ever shown front squats to actually put more muscle or strength on your quads than a back squat, right? Why do we do front squats? We do front squats as uh, an accessory movement for certain Olympic lifts. And we do front squats when our axial loading is so high that we need another exercise we can do more volume in that's still a squat because you have to go lighter. You have to go about 15% lighter. All right, so then I would be basically not squatting again. All right, I developed this problem by doing exercises besides the squat and not back squatting. The solution here is not to avoid the back squat. The solution here is to rebuild the back squat, right? Everything isn't an assistance or an accessory movement. It can be, if you're doing 15 sets a week on an exercise for six months straight and you have a weak point that hasn't corrected itself, yeah, that's when you say, okay, we, we, we need some sort of accessory or assistance movement, right? That, it's very clear. I'm only doing six reps a week on the back squat. If I've got a strength imbalance on the back squat, the very last thing I need to be doing is saying, well, let's find a different exercise besides the back squat to fix this. That's just, that's nonsense. I need to be learning the motor pattern to do in the back squat correctly in addition <laughs> to growing the weak muscles involved. Uh, 
back squats are the only solution. That's what I'm going to have to do. So that's the goal. We're going to work our way towards doing more and more volume on the back offsets. And eventually, we'll start seeing that problem clean up and that bar speed will go back up. When that bar speed drops back to two seconds, and we see a, less of that uh, upper back rounding, what do we know? We know that we're ready to increase weight again. But in the meantime, it's going to take me weeks and weeks of doing that back off work. We, we need to rebuild the squat. That's how we work this Bulgarian system. That's how this works. This is how everyone who's successful in this system does it. They do the back off volume. Back off volume first, then if you need our further accessories, you can rotate those in, particularly for a novel training effect. I haven't done the volume approach in Bulgarian yet. That's always your first resolution, right? That's what we do first. We let that correct stuff first. Then, if that's not good enough, then we start looking at rotating other exercises in on an as-needed basis. Um, but it, we're not at that point yet. So we're going to do the back off work and I need to get to where I'm doing 18 total sets of back squats every week spread out over my six days and let's let's see how that works we'll see if that puts some muscle and strength on me uh, that's that's a pretty pretty effective way to get it done right that's what we need to do and keeping in mind I've got to do this while losing weight and body fat so you know it's a, a lot to handle that's why I have to sleep and rest a lot uh, the deadlift went okay today. In fact, my thumbs hurt less. They hurt less today after this. Yesterday, this, this next jump here <clears throat> made my thumbs hurt a little bit on the hook grip. Uh, I coated them in some Neosporin last night, and today they're doing so much better. It didn't really bother them. They're not nearly as sore. So my thumbs are just toughening up week after week after week. You know, it's, it's going to be coming up real soon to where I'll be doing over 500 every day. And then we'll go ahead and pull that pesky... Uh, deficit out and we'll just go back to normal deadlifts at some point but uh, yeah the, the thumbs are toughening up and I'm getting a lot of extra grip work with these rows uh, seriously doing 18 sets of five on these supine rows per week uh, I'm noticing a difference in my grip too I feel like it's really working my grip in my hands a lot so we're getting a nice bonus training effect from that in addition to you know all the carryover we're going to get to the bench press and the deadlift particularly. Uh, rows, you need to remember that guys, squats and rows are some of your most important deadlift accessories. Because the deadlift is an exercise that really benefits from accessories because it, it's just difficult to come in and do 15 sets of deadlifts every week. Best of luck with that uh, and recovery. <laughs> so uh, we actually do need these, these other lifts and rows off the floor, any type of row off the floor. You know, you'll see lifters argue all day long about what's the best type of row off the floor to improve your deadlift. They're all good for it. They're all beneficial for your deadlift. I don't care whether it's a strict pin lay, a cheat pin lay, uh, those ones you see Dr. Deadlift do to where he pulls it off the floor, then comes up and turns it into a cheat row kind of, uh, supine, pronated, all of them. They're all beneficial. So anyone who recommends any of those to improve your deadlift isn't steering you wrong, right? It's a matter of opinion at that point. But I think they all carry over. Any row off the floor carries over to your deadlift. If you want a stronger deadlift, do tons of rowing from the floor. It'd be a real good idea. And it'll help with your tightness and stability on your bench press to boot. All right, and then we finish up with my three by three press. I was a little fatigued on these today. <clears throat> I moved a hair slower than I'd like on a couple of the reps, but you know, is what it is. I mean, none of them are grinders, so this is still easy. I think we're going to be able to finish the week out just fine with this. Next week, we'll bump it up a hair and do it again. And then maybe the week after, we'll rotate in some more bench volume and we'll start working on that bench. Because I, I think a good three-week block of overhead press volume is really kind of what the doctor ordered for me to get my stability where I needed to start working the bench up. I just want to make sure that I've got a safe platform uh, to build off of to rebuild my bench where we start really trying to push up towards 340, 350, all that stuff. And eventually 400. 400 is going to be a long time. But, you know, the time's going to pass anyways, right? I mean, two years from now is still going to happen two years from now. I might as well do something productive with it, with my training. So, you know, it is what it is. Stick it out for the long haul. And here's my last, last set, an easy triple. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to do this all week just fine. And we'll go up next week, 
two and a half, and then we'll get some nice muscle growth hopefully out of it next week. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.